So what do you notice? What do you wonder? So one thing, one, th one thing that you're going to notice is that on here, you've got all the x-intercepts have a three. Okay. But I want you to notice how the multiplicity is different for each of these. So if we have a multiplicity of two, we're going to have a bounce. So it's going to come down and then bounce back up. This has an x-intercept at negative one and three. Okay. Notice how the multiplicity is one. So it's going to cross and then it's going to bounce at three. On this one, we have a multiplicity of three at x equals three. And this is called a wiggle. We haven't seen this very often recently, but that's actually what it's going to be called. We're also going to have an x-intercept at three and six on this last one. Notice how the multiplicity is one. So it's going to cross, bounce at three. Okay. So we are on the back page. This is not in your packet. You're writing it on the like blank paper on the back. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to take a look. Okay. So on here, this is written out in factored form. When you want to find the zeros of this, you are going to switch the sign of each of these numbers. So the zeros are going to be negative nine, negative three and four. Okay, so all of the zeros are going to be negative nine, negative three, and four. The multiplicity is going to be the exponent. Okay, so for negative nine, we see that it has an exponent of one. Since there's nothing written there, we assume it's a one. Same thing for negative three. It has a multiplicity of one. The exponent for this one, for four, is going to be two. Now we learned earlier this week and last week that if it's a multiplicity of one, that means it's going to cross. If it has a multiplicity of two, it's going to bounce. Well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to graph all of these zeros. I'm going to put a point at negative 9. I'm going to put a point at negative 3. And I'm going to put a point at 4. All across the x-axis. 3 is going to be the exponent if they actually multiply this out. Now, I'm not going to sit here and multiply it out. But what I am going to show you is since it's in factored form, in order to find the degree, we're going to add up exponents or add up the multiplicity. So what's one plus one plus two? Four. So we're going to have a degree of four. What's the So this is just a review of what we learned last week, right? So up here at the top, it says cross, which is an odd multiplicity. That's going to look like... Mm, that's going to look like something like this point right here. That's a cross. For even, it's going to bounce. It's going to look like this. Now, down here at the bottom, it says in behavior. Okay, so we're trying to sketch this without using Desmos, without using graphing calculator. So in behavior, remember that little chart that I gave y'all last week where I said odd and even. And then I said whether it was positive or whether it was negative. So the chart kind of looked like this. If it was even and it was positive, they were both facing up. If it was even and negative, they were both facing down. If it was odd and positive, it was like this. And if it was even, I'm sorry, if it was odd and negative, it was facing like this. 
If you have no idea what I'm talking about with this chart, I would write it down because it's going to be helpful. I'll give you a second. Okay. So since the degree is even, okay, and all of our coefficients would be positive. So if we multiplied this x times x times x squared, we would get an even x, I'm sorry, positive x to the fourth. So that means that I would have an even positive in behavior. So that means that as X is approaching positive infinity, Y is also approaching positive infinity. When X is approaching negative infinity, Y is also approaching positive infinity. That means that the ends are gonna be facing upwards. What is the degree degree determines um, whether it's going to have the same way facing either. So if it's even, it's both going to be facing up or both going to be facing down. If it's odd, it's going to be, yeah. And kind of just like the shape of the graph, huh? You add the exponents. And that also determines the potential number of real and complex solutions. Frankie, what's up? Say again? Okay, so you're taking the exponent and adding those up. So one plus one plus two gives us what four. Kevin? The end behavior? Okay, so we know that it's even degreed. And we know that the coefficients are all positive if we multiplied all this mess out. Okay, so that means that we're going to use this picture right here. So that means that both sides are going to be positive. So as we move to the right, I'm sorry, as we move to the left, we're having positive infinity. As we move to the right, positive infinity. So all of this comes down to wanting to actually draw the graph. Okay, so we know that on the left hand side, it's positive at the end. We're going to start up here. And we're gonna connect this dot. Remember how we said it crosses at negative nine? So we're gonna go down. And then at negative three, it also says that we're gonna cross. So it's gonna cross again. And then at x equals four, we're gonna bounce. So notice how we have a degree of four and it looks like that w. So it's positively facing on both ends. Okay, so what are our zeros of this function? So we're gonna switch the sign of everything that's inside that parentheses, right? So we're gonna have negative two and two. We're now gonna state their multiplicity. So we're gonna look at their exponent. And so we have an exponent of one for the negative two, and we got an exponent of two for two. Now, again, remember the degree comes from adding the exponents or adding the multiplicities. So that's going to have a degree of three. So we have an odd polynomial and we got a negative chilling out front. So that means that we're going to deal with a negative odd function. So it's going to look like this. So we're going to write out the end behavior. So as we go to the left, what's happening to our y values? It's going up. As we go to the right, what happens to our y values? It goes down. We're gonna go ahead and plot our points, which is at negative two and two. And then we're gonna sketch the graph. So we're gonna start on the left-hand side up here. And we see at x equal negative two, 
we're going to cross. And then at x equals 2, we're going to bounce. So we're going to come back up, push the x-axis, and then go back down. Notice how the shape of this follows the same pattern that we found in our um, chart. Probably what you're going to see most often. Um, and this, you can't, you can't put this into Desmos. Okay, so this is why you have to know what you're doing. So what are my zeros in this equation? Like, where is it crossing the x-axis? Negative a and b, right? Okay, now the multiplicity. Remember, if we're crossing the x-axis, then that's going to give us a 1 for multiplicity. If we're bouncing at the x-axis, that's going to give us a multiplicity of 2. So when we write this out in factored form, this is going to be x, and you're going to change the sign of a. So that's going to be plus a times x minus b. And remember, the multiplicities are going to go for the exponents on the outside. Now, this is important for knowing like what the end behavior actually looks like. So we know that this is going to be an odd function, right? So the question is, is it positive or is it negative? Well, a positive looks like this, and a negative looks like this. So which one is it? Negative. So we're going to put a negative out front. Okay, so notice how I took a graph. I identified the zeros, and then I wrote the equation. Right, so the zeros are going to be negative 3, 2, and 5. Now I'm going to switch the sign of each of those and put an x in front of it. So this is going to give me x minus 3, x minus 2. Oh, I'm sorry, x plus 3. Sorry, x minus 2 and x minus 5. It crosses at negative 3. That's going to be an exponent of 1. It bounces at two, that's gonna be an exponent of two, and it goes up, I'm sorry, it crosses at x equals five. Now, both of these guys are facing up, so I know that it's even, and I know that it's going to be, it's going to be even, and it's going to be positive. So that's the function right there. So y equals x plus three, times x minus 2 squared times x minus 1. I'm sorry, x minus 5. I can't talk today. Any questions on how I got that? OK, so we've got zeros at negative 3, 4, and 6. OK, so we're going to plot those first. Negative 3, 4, and 6. Now, this tells me for my in behavior that is going to get larger and larger in either the positive or the negative direction for x, and the y is getting larger in the negative direction. That means that it's going to be pointing down for both. Now remember, it's the degree of four, okay? And they didn't tell us which one bounces and which one crosses, right? Okay, so let's think about this really quick. I gotta finish with this guy going down and this guy going down. So I'm going to create an equation that does that, okay? And it's got to have an exponent of 4. So we can't just, like, have it, like, cross and then go back up, okay? That's not how it works. It's got to be a bounce in the middle, okay? This, 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 this line is rough, okay? But y'all get the point. Any questions on that? Okay. There is a question on your CFA and your test that says, hey, what's the sketch of this graph? Okay. All right. So one thing I do want to talk about is everybody always asks me what they can do for their grade um, at this point in time. And so remember, we just took a quiz. On the ninth, you're going to have a performance final. Okay. On the 14th, you're going to have a CFA. And on the 16th, you're going to have a unit 
three tests. Okay, the performance final is 5% of your grade. The CFA is 1% of your grade. And the unit three test is about 10% of your grade. So this is about 16% of your overall grade right there. Three assignments. So if you want to impact your grade drastically, I would do well on those three assignments, okay? So now I'm going to give you the performance final review today. You are going to work it out on Tuesday. I would go ahead and start taking a look at it prior to Tuesday. So just in case you can ask me questions, on Tuesday, I'm gonna post a video to go over that stuff. And then Wednesday, you're gonna take the performance final, okay? The CFA is very much like the stuff that we've gone over for the past two weeks, including long division, which we'll talk about that again next week, okay? Unit three test is over everything that we've covered in the past two weeks um, and a little bit of what we're gonna cover on Monday and Friday next week, okay? So if you are wanting to help your grade, that is where I would start. Do well on those three assignments. If you have NPIs, the deadline for NPIs is December 4th. After December 4th, I will not take them, okay? No, I will not replace them if you didn't turn them in. Nope, don't care, okay? I'm telling you this now so that you can go ahead and prepare, okay? So if you want to help your grade, that is where you're going to start. 